Uh, would John Carter please come up? Billy Carter was born in 1930. As baseball historian Burton Russell points out, he got his taste for serious baseball by becoming a bad boy in the H&D League for first the 1947 Halifax Cardinals, and then in 1948 he performed the same function for Peaches, Ruins, Dartmouth, Arrows. This is the one instance where we didn't have enough photographs, so we're showing you a bunch of pictures for the H&D League, even though he may not be in some of them. As an adult, he was never a big man, but opposing pitchers soon learned that he was far more powerful at the plate than his size would indicate. The local sporting world was shocked to hear on December 3, 1973, that at 43 years old, he'd collapsed and died in the front seat of a fire truck as it was returning to the Bears Road Station. Lieutenant Carter died from a totally unexpected heart attack. Some remembered him as an excellent senior hockey player, known primarily for the speed he showed during his stints with the Halifax Wolves and with the Windsor Maple Leafs. But most of the sporting fraternity remembered Bill Carter as an outstanding infielder in the import laden H and D League. He opened eyes early once he advanced to the senior circuit. In 1950, he became a utility infielder for the Bob Decker coach Dartmouth Arrows. He played a large part in their capture of the H and D League title. The complete unknown in his first official time at bat stepped to the plate down in Liverpool and delighted his teammates while disappointing the hometown fans. He blasted a homer over the right field fence. It was to be the first of many. H&D history shows players changing teams year after year, going to whomever paid the most under-the-table money. In 1951, Carter played second base with the Halifax Cardinals. In the final league game, his home run over the Little Brooklyn right center field fence in the ninth inning inspired the club to a 4-3 win over his former team, the Arrows. Playing third base that day, Carter also contributed a triple. In 52, Bill Carter and several other H&D league performers moved to the popular Shelburne County League. Carter played for Lockport. In 53, moved back to the regu as regular second baseman for the Cardinals. In 54, he batted 316. The Cardinals, which included the likes of Johnny Clark, Jim Heller, Zeke Bella, Jerry Klein, and Bob Cavus, dominated the circuit that season, ousting Stellarton and Liverpool to win the H&D League Championship. The best day of Carter's star-studded career was June 20th of that year, when he set an all-time H&D League record when he went 7-for-7 seven seven off Stellarton pitching. This, it should be remembered, was in a league which placed 24 players in the U.S. major leagues. He began the following year by being named Player of the Week, and then while executing a double play at second base, he broke his leg in a collision with a Kentville runner, and the summer and fall became a write-off. He was so popular that late in the season, the management of the Kentville and Halifax clubs staged a Billy Carter day. Thousands of fans stood and cheered as the game profit of more than $800 was presented to him. He was just as successful when he made a comeback the following year under a new coach, former major leaguer Lou Kraus. In this last year of the H&D League's existence, 1959, Carter joined the Joe Camacho-directed Halifax Red Sox. League stats show Bill Carter as having collected 254 hits in his 943 trips to the plate. The year after the demise of the H&D League, he joined Nova Scotia's baseball guru, Eddie Gillis, and led his canning Habs to the Provincial Senior Championship. He got two hits in a losing cause in the final Maritime Championship game as his Habs went down to the Moncton Cubs. In 1961, the 31-year-old Carter had a terrific season in the field, combining with playing coach Johnny Clark to form an outstanding double play combination for the Halifax Cards. In their playoff series against the Arrows, he batted an amazing 429. The following year, he, play, he replaced Johnny Clark as playing coach. Didn't take him long to learn the respect of his, earn the respect of his teammates as he went four for five in the Eastern League opening game against the Dartmouth Arrows. An injury in their playoff series against Hansport forced him out of the game and after some serious contemplation out of baseball altogether. He finished as an outstanding, though aging, coach infielder leading the Halifax Keiths to a provincial senior A softball title. Ladies and gentlemen, a man Major League Scouts turned down because of his lack of size, not his lack of heart nor talent. A man whose name comes to the fore whenever the great H&D League is discussed, a guy who could play any position in the infield, a man who, was, who led by his hard work, the little man with a big swing and an even bigger heart, our third inductee tonight, the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Center Hall of Fame, Mr. Bill Carter.
this time I would ask uh, Mr. Scott Ferguson, General Manager of Halifax Metro Center, to please come forward and make the presentation to John Carter. John, I have uh, many personal recollections, very fond recollections and memories of uh, Billy, and as I'm sure you do, but mind date back to the time when he was a bat boy for the Dartmouth Arrows, Herm Kaplan, Bob Kaplan's Dartmouth Arrows, and he literally, he was about 135 pounds, maybe, as a bat boy, about 110. He grew into about 135. Yeah, he was, he was quite, a, quite a guy. He was fast, or whatever you call him. But, uh, <clears throat> I know he'd love to see this, but everybody waits 20 years or 30 years before they get a break, so thank you very much. He, uh, he literally battled his way into the regular lineup, which was star-studded with American college players and a lot of future major leaguers. He uh, played uh, a great second base. He uh, hit uh, with the best of them, and you had to be very proud of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was good. He, he was fast, as I said, and he played with uh, all American players, so... There wasn't that many Canadians playing. So, uh, as I said, he was very proud of this. I know that for a fact, and uh, I guess that's about it. And you have very every reason to be very proud as well. Thank you, John Carter. <laughs> Billy Carter, ladies and gentlemen.